Hi, my name is Nancy L.T. Hamilton. Welcome to my jewelry studio. Today's adventure involves this cute little pattern link chain, and it pairs really nicely with my magnetic clasp. So you should check that video out, link below. So let's get on to the actual things that are needed to get this project started. We're gonna use 18 gauge round wire. You can use whatever kind of wire your little heart desires. I'm using sterling silver, and we'll need 24 gauge sheet metal. Uh, you'll need two strips that are approximately six inches long. They're for a, um, for a bracelet. These are five millimeters wide. So if you're sawing these out, you might wanna make the um, blank where you describe your line at five and a half millimeters just so that you can have extra for cleanup because you're gonna have to clean those edges up. Uh, if you do not have a rolling mill, there's options. The pattern plates that are available in the world are 24 gauge usually, and you can cut those up. I believe they come in, I know they come in brass and copper, bronze possibly. Um, you can always make your own by etching it, or you can pattern your metal with hammers, uh, oh, stamps, and even one of those little electric engravers, they make great little patterns on metal too. So it's up to you how you manage that. I wanted to talk a little bit about the jump rings. Um, you can try this if you want to make a less wide chain. Try bringing this down to like 4.5 millimeter jump ring mandrel and then you would have to adjust the length on the pattern links, you know, take it down to 10 millimeters instead of 14 millimeters. So uh, I hope I've covered everything. If not, I'll put notes all over the dang video like I usually do. There's just so much fun stuff to tell you. I get so excited. Anyway, let's get on to the process. First thing, making jump rings. off the random ends. By the way, I have a full video on how to use the Pepe Tools uh, jumping cutter that really will help you to understand and not fear your cutter. See that? I also created a chart what blade to use with which size and gauge of uh, jump ring. I'm using a one and a half inch blade. I'm gonna put it up against this little peg here. You, I don't know if you saw or not, but I lubricated the top of that, stuck it on the tape so that the jump rings don't fly off all over the place. And this gets tightened down so it doesn't, the top doesn't wiggle. Also make sure you put your blade in the right way. I'm gonna talk about that in the video too. <laughs> we need. So this part's a bit tedious. What we have to do is take our jump rings and close them all. And then we also are going to, I'm going to just go ahead and while I'm doing this, maybe do a couple and then put them on the charcoal block set up for um, soldering. Because each one of these seams has to be soldered we are going to make them make them into ovals. So I'm just going to show you the beginning of this process and then we're going to move on. I've got this hard solder in flux and cut up a bunch of little pallions. I'm going to put a couple out now. You don't want them too close together because you can uh, melt the ones next to it. And in case you haven't done jump rings before, 
this gap in their off center. Push them together like that. And then I'm gonna dip it into the flux. I might just do a bunch of these at once. It might be more efficient, but for now, I'm just gonna show you that. And then you wanna put the seam on top of the piece of solder and repeat that until all 60 are set up in this fashion and have fun. <laughs> While you're soldering these, you it's a good idea to solder from the backside because it the heat from the torch runs over to the next row enough to make it just a little bit quicker. canister or a small thing like this with holes drilled into it to hold it so it doesn't get the jump rings don't get all over and lost in your pickle pot much easier so now we're going to be shaping our jump rings you can shape them in two ways you can do a fatter version or a longer skinnier version the longer skinnier version is going to be done at the top of the bow forming pliers, I think that's what they're called. Uh, and that'll create this long skinny one. If you wanna make a fatter link, which actually keeps the uh, chain, keeps this the pattern stuff from moving as much because there isn't as much room. So it's kind of a different look and a different move movement to it. So if you wanna do these fat ones, you wanna have your seam always on a long side and these are gonna slide down as far as they can go. Give it a squeeze. Actually, I have marks on the other side. And then make some marks lower down and go ahead and do that. So see the difference? And this is longer and thinner and these are a little chubbier. One of the tricks when making these is to put them in the same place every time. And you can see where I've marked my pliers the white gap is where they're gonna go each time. That helps you to maintain and can create consistently uh, sized ovals. Sadly, sometimes these things pop <laughs> and it scares the heck out of you because they snap. Uh, unfortunately, these need to go into your refining bin because you can't fix them. Just have to make another one, which I do. Fortunately, this time it was only one. Occasionally it's more, so be prepared. We're gonna set our little jump rings aside for now, and we're gonna start working on our strips of metal. After you cut your strips, uh, if you're using a rolling mill, go ahead and roll them out. My strips grew by what, about a centimeter or a little more. Uh, depends on how hard you roll it through the press. You want to get 11 pieces on each strip or something like that. You're going to get like 21, 22 pieces. Mine ended up being 154 millimeters long or 15.4 centimeters. And I need two of them. So whatever combination you have to come up with, you can use scrap for this, which is what makes it nice. Just make sure you get enough. That's all. Um, okay, so I've marked off at 14 millimeter increments. And I'm just using this little handheld uh, shear and clipping them. It doesn't matter if the edges are pretty or not, or even if it's, you know, perfectly exact. You want to try to keep them square. And then just go ahead and clip off all 21, 22 of your pieces. And then we'll move on to the next exciting moment. All right, it's time to put things together. So I have two different patterns going here, so I wanna alternate mine. I'm gonna make a link for this. So I've marked my pliers there, and I'm gonna put the strip approximately in the middle, and then make a partial turn, and then flip the material over back in the same place and finish it. So it's kinda almost 
perpendicular with the bottom. Try to grab it by the end when you're doing this too. When you're first bending it. Then you want to leave a gap like that so that you can get your links in there. You want to make sure that if you're putting a um, link on with a seam that the seam is on the inside here. Okay, once that gets like that, actually this could go over just a little more. Come in with my flat nose, smaller set would help, and push that down. I'm going to grab a link. Here's the seam, so that's going to go on the inside. Come in with my flat pliers, push down. You can always come in with your round nose. And give it a final squeeze. Come on, guys. Yeah. And then the next piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to curl up a bunch of these. And get ready to just kind of do production line stuff. Don't forget to flip these. This is important. Otherwise, they're very uneven. And it's not pretty. And I'm going to hook it on to my link. Get in there with my flat pliers. Come on, guys. Grab another link. Seam side in. Squish down if you need to. You can give it another squeeze with this. And here we have the beginning of our chain, which I think will make a great bracelet. If you wanted to do a double of these, you could just add little jump rings to the side to hook the other section of the chain up. I may change this yet. Who knows? All right, so here we are. We're done. Next steps on this is probably I'm going to uh, throw it in the tumbler, and then I'm going to put it in some liver sulfur and buff it up and I'll have a, either a video or a photo of it at the end of this video. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope we meet again. This is Nancy L.T. Hamilton saying ciao, Bella. Bye.